Today I thought we'd have a look at this. It's a new product from EP Ever called the E-Log01 and it connects via the RS485 port to either your Landstar B, your Tracer A or your Tracer BN series uh, charge controllers and in fact the E-Tracer solar charge controllers as well. Any charge controller from EP Ever with an RS485 communications port. So what does the E-Log01 do? Well, it logs the information from your solar charge controller. It does that about every 10 minutes, and it claims it can memorise up to four months of logs. So what's that? About 17,000 entries. So let's have a look at the device itself. Uh, the plastic doesn't show up terribly well, does it? On the camera here, it's a sort of grey brown it's an odd choice of color uh, but it's there embossed elog 01 the device communication on the left hand side is an rj45 connector uh, using the rs485 protocol across there so this doesn't plug into your normal network switch unfortunately uh, but it plugs directly into the solar charge controller and uh, the solar charge controller powers this device there is a battery compartment in here for a cr1220 as it says on the flap there and that means it's 12 millimeters across and two millimeters uh, thick and a circular battery i believe on the right hand side we've got another rj45 connector here and a mini usb and uh, so we can connect this to the PC over the mini USB and uh, well the RJ45 connector on the side there allows you to do a couple of interesting things. Yes it allows you to still use things like the MT50 remote meter um, at the same time so there we can see that's booting up showing my traces information so we can see the live information on the screen and we know that it's also being logged on the e-log01 it also works with the official cable as well as my homemade rs485 to usb adapter and although this isn't mentioned in the manual it also seems to work quite happily with the eBox Wi-Fi 01, and therefore I can only imagine it works also with the eBox Bluetooth 01, the BLE 01. So the fact that this complements these accessories rather than replaces them, I think is a really sensible decision by EP Ever. Now obviously to do a proper test on this, I've needed to get some logs into it, so it's been connected to my Tracer A MPPT solar charge controller for uh, three days now, so I've obviously already taken it out of the box, but this is how it comes in a e-box box, and uh, you get the certificate of quality, a brief manual, a uh, bubble wrap bag which the actual item came in itself and in here we've got a USB cable for that mini USB connector and the uh, ubiquitous brown EP Ever RS485 cable. So if we put that to one side for the moment the manual is fairly brief but that's to be expected there isn't all that much to say about this um, but there is some interesting information on here. So to record data, you just need to plug this into your solar charge controller uh, to log, uh, download the log. Sorry, uh, connecting it to the PC, it needs to have power from the uh, solar charge controller. And if you want to uh, download it straight to the PC, so you're taking the unit away from your solar charge controller, well, it needs that CR1220 uh, little cell there. It also confirms up here that it's about 20,000 point uh, capacity in there. So uh, 17,000 I did on that rough bit of maths. Um, it also mentions that you need the log download tool and the PC software, um, but we'll come to that again in a minute. 
and on the back uh, it shows you a bit about that software but I'm going to get the laptop out in a minute and down the bottom right here it says it only consumes 0.3 watts um, from the uh, solar charge controller and ultimately of course your batteries. So here's the software for the e-log 01 and uh, the software itself does not need installing and it's the log download tool here but first of all we need to connect to it and there is a driver and an install here for the USB to COM port driver which I'm assuming it is. Now because I haven't got it plugged into the solar charge controller I need one of these a CR1220 uh, button cell here and it's not supplied with the unit I've had to buy one of these separately so we'll uh, get that in there uh, and it will go that way up there it goes sitting in there quite nicely that will help uh, power this item while it's got USB uh, as well for some reason but uh, that's what it asks for so we'll plug that in and pop it down there the green light comes on and in fact goes red let's see what the computer thinks of that and there it has it's installed as com port 3 and uh, interestingly i'm pretty sure that's the same driver that is used by the official ep ever cable rs45 to usb cable um, so I wonder if we can use that functionality as well. I guess we'll find out in a minute. But let's open up the Elog01 software. It's automatically chosen COM3. If we refresh, I oh, don't need to do that. But we open and we can see ID device 1. And if we query it, uh, the record start at record number 1 and go all the way up to 501 so let's download those records ask me to download them and I'll just call it elog01.csv so with those records happily downloading we've confirmed that the USB port on here uses the same driver as the standard RS485 USB cable we've also confirmed that unplugging it for a while does not lose its memory and that my battery works and uh, the USB function does work once that battery is plugged in. So let's uh, finish off this download and we'll have a look at the results. So I thought I'd look at these results uh, through Google Sheets and uh, here we have, I've called it Elog Download 01 and I just imported these results using the file and import functionality built in and uh, here we are we can see the record number on the left hand side we can see array current array voltage and array power uh, load current load voltage load power battery current battery voltage battery temperature battery state of charge battery max voltage battery minimum voltage and uh, what else can we see along here we can see the statuses of the array, the charging, the battery, the load, and the device, the daily energy consumed, the monthly energy consumed, annual energy consumed, and then the total energy consumed. There's all sorts of information held in here. And uh, the daily energy generated, monthly, annual, and total generated energy. And finally, the date and time in the last column so here we have a chart a graph here of the array power and the battery voltage the battery voltage is in red and the array power in blue and this is a roughly 48 hour period so uh, the battery voltage rose up pretty quickly with a fairly small here 12 and a half watts or something in that order and then before we know it the uh, solar charge controller is in float mode and it's just doing a little trickle charge to keep that battery level up and before we know it it's night time again and again the next morning within a very short period of time in the morning my batteries are up to their required level and uh, my solar panels aren't doing much I must have come in to the shed at this point and turned something on which brought the battery voltage down uh, briefly 
uh, but yeah it recovered very quickly so I threw these two columns together battery voltage and battery temperature over 24 hours as we get warmed up throughout the day and then we drop off at night well my battery uh, voltage is staying very stable because the uh, voltage compensation function is turned on on my tracer and this proves that it seems to be working reasonably well and the final graph I've thrown together here in Google Sheets uh, shows the array power in blue that we've seen before and the uh, battery voltage here in red in the middle showing it coming up slightly dropping away slightly at night but in this one I decided it might be interesting to add the state of charge monitor and as you can see up here while it was being actively charged throughout the day the state of charge was 100% but as soon as the array voltage dropped and the battery voltage dropped just by half a volt well the state of charge came down to 75% and in all honesty, that's exactly why I ignore the state of charge monitor on my uh, Tracer A MPPT solar charge controller. So I thought it would be interesting to find out if the E-Log01 can act as an RS485 to USB bridge and replace the uh, official cable. So I've opened up the solar station monitor. Let's plug in my Tracer A here and uh, well, let's start monitoring. And indeed it does. It's showing the live information from my Tracer MPPT solar charge controller. So I have to say I like the E-Log01 but then again I'm a bit of a stats geek and I like to see this information and I'm happy to play around with it in Excel. But if you're interested in buying one of these, you need to understand that you are going to have to mangle that data yourself in Excel or something similar. There isn't a program available at the moment which does that for you. I really do like the fact that it works with the other accessories and you don't need to get rid of one to put this in place. I would like to say thank you to Mike Smith who found this mentioned on the EP Ever website and pointed me in the direction of that link. I'd also like to thank Alice from EP Solar who sent me this sample. I think I'm the first person outside the factory to have a play with this. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.